you will soon understand that work is a rubber ball. If you drop it, it will bounce back. But the other four balls, family, health, friends, and spirit, are made of glass. If you drop one of these, they will be irrevocably scuffed, marked, nicked, damaged, or even shattered. They will never be the same. You must understand that and strive for balance in your life. Thank you very much, Megan. By the way, Megan, you can go to Google, write uh, the speech of Brian Dyson. You will see it and you can put it because we're going to talk a little bit about it. So everybody heard what Megan did for us. This is not me saying this. This is the CEO of Coca-Cola company for almost five years, very important person. Everybody was waiting in that conference or in that meeting to have this very important, significant person to deliver his talk. But unfortunately, this person, he only spent 60 seconds to deliver this message. But as much as this message is short, <coughs> as, mes as much as this message is very important and it reached the point and it delivered the idea that he wanted to say. When he finished, he said, I was able to talk more, but he said, I don't have time as a CEO in Coca-Cola company. So that's why I have to go follow up with my you know, business or management. So what I want to say that this person, he delivered very important message in very short time. And also by not spending a lot of time, he told them I'm busy. So he told them another lesson, the significance of the time. So the game of the life, what I mean by the game of the life, I mean exactly how we can benefit from the time that God gave us the perfect way without losing any day, any hour or any second. I know what I'm saying, maybe it sounds a little bit hard, but believe me, your life worth the time that you have. If I ask you, how old are you? You will tell me 20, 30, 40, 60, 70, I don't know. This number is a time. So your life equal the time. So that's why the time is very, very important. Why I'm saying this? After I heard, and you all heard, about the passing of Sayyidina Abbas. He is only 52 years old. He grew up as an orphanage. So then he entered the seminary, he became a monk, he was serving in the patriarchate, then he become, he went to Athens to study, then <coughs> he become priest, monk priest like me now, and then later on he was ordained as a bishop of Homs and the area around. And he was very active. And we all know what happened in Syria since 2011. It's almost nine years. And his city or his town was one maybe of the cities that been attacked big, big time. And the church, we have maybe the oldest church in Syria, the church of Umm Zanar, they called, or the mother of the belt because they have the belt of Virgin Mary over there. And this church is very, very old, very ancient, and very, very big blessing. We have something belong to Virgin Mary, maybe the most valuable part or anything belong to the time or period of the Virgin Mary and Jesus himself. We do have it in that church. And the church was destroyed totally almost and he kept the belt, Zunoro we call him. And then later on when the city was free from the terrorists, he was maybe one of the first people. He, he was there with his people around. Of course, it took a lot of money, effort, time, and just name things. 
until he was able to go back and the people, because the city was destroyed. Yet he was very, very passion person. He had very good heart, very sweet heart, very pure heart. And he was very generous, uh, very kind to everybody. This is not me saying this, but everybody knows that this bishop, he was very pure and good heart. And he was helping the needy and the poor a lot during this hard time in Syria. And never ever left his archdiocese except when all the people of his archdiocese left the town of the city, he also left. So he was one of the last people to leave the town or the church. But all these things three months ago, he felt a little bit hard, uh, you know, tired, nummy left side. He saw the doctor, they did some tests, they find out he had a tumor, brain tumor. The, the kind of tumor it was very aggressive, very late stage. There was no cure. They told him, just, you know, leave until you finish this. And this is what happened. Uh, he just passed away yesterday. So I was thinking about him, that this person, <coughs> he gave his life to God, to the church, to help people. And he was very humble down to earth. Yet he just lived a very early age, according to our understanding as a human age 52. So I was thinking about him, but I have to tell you that no matter what I'm going to say, we have always to understand that the Lord is good. No matter what happened, pain, short life, poverty, uh, hunger, anything. If we believe in God, the Lord is always good. We don't know why, but the Lord is always good. We don't have maybe to understand, but we trust. This is what we call the faith. Okay, so I begin to think about the significance of the time. And I was thinking about me. I don't know why I was reading something. It's written 19, uh, sorry, 2014. And right away, I begin to connect the death of Sayyidina with this date, 2014. I said, that's like six years ago. Did Sayyidina Silvanos? was thinking in six years, 2014, he might be not here with us. He didn't, he was full of energy everywhere, helping, serving God, the church, the people, you know? But when the time come, God called him and he went. We believe he is in much better and comfort place. But the question came to me, if I have six years, if I have two years, if I have 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 60 years, I don't know. I've, I know exactly when I'm leaving, how I'm gonna invest in my life, how I'm gonna invest in my eternity, how I'm going to be ready for that time. So that's why I called the game of the life because really the time is really, really the most significant thing. It's like our life is like a game. And this game, the minute they play the, the beginning, there would be end also. Unlike the movie, we know when it's gonna begin, when it's gonna end. Our life, we know when it began, but we don't know when it's gonna end. That's why it's very important. This person, fair enough, even he was not a Christian. He said, imagine you have five balls in your hand and you play with them in the air and you cannot stop. These five, he named them, work, family, health, friend, and spirit. Pretty much he, he covered all the aspects, the physical, and the spiritual and the social, our relationship, okay? He said four balls, they are made from glass. And one, which is the work, 
it made it, 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 it made from driver. You see, if it fall from your hand, it's gonna bounce, bounce back to you. Unlike the other four, which is family, health, friends, spirit. The minute it falls from your hand, it's gonna be crushed, smashed, shattered. It's there on the screen, you can see it. So what I want to tell you, to have balance in our life, it's very important. If we take any one of these and we go very extremely, except the spirit, we're gonna lose the other. Except the spirit, except our relationship with God. If we go as deep as we go, as more as we're gonna be more careful for our friend, for our work, for our life, and for our friends. So that's why I want just to, to tell you how much I was impressed, but what, but why, uh, but how this person who was not a Christian, this Dyson, when he made the life like ball, okay? And the way you know how to manage it, how to balance it, and you know how to set up your priority in your life, because our life is too short. As long as we think it is, it's too short. There is always things you have to do in your life. And managing your time, you would be very successful in the game of your life. And giving to each ball the, the perfect, let's say, size in your life, the perfect rule in your life, the, the perfect time it's going to make this good and important balance in your life and in my life. So that's why putting our priority, using benefit from the time, it's going to be you and me going to be very successful in your life. So investing in our time, or if we want to say that time is the most important area in your life and my life that we should all invest in and being very good management, manager or maestro, and you know how to manage it, that's going to depend on how you manage it. It's going to depend where you're going to spend your eternity. And we have always to remember that the Bible always telling us how to use this time. In book of Ephesians 5.16, I will say a lot of verses because these verses focus a lot about how the time is valuable, how the time is significant, how the time is important. And your life and my life, it's a game. If we know how to use it, to manage it wisely, we will win in this game. St. Paul, he say, Ephesians 5.16, he said a lot of things, but in the last part of this verse, he said, redeeming the time because the days are evil. So the Bible telling us we should be very smart, how to redeem, in other words, how to benefit redeeming something which is giving thing to have another things, okay? So redeeming the time because the days are evil. So this sentence or this verse is telling us how important we should invest in our time. But we have to be very careful. Again, always remember the five balls. If you give attention to one more than the other, you're going to lose one of these five balls, okay? For example, if I am very, very, I have very big ambition in my life. I'm a very ambitious person. I have to have the best house in the best area, making a lot of money every year. This is nothing wrong with it, but that maybe make you lose friends, 
spirit and maybe yourself physically. I read something, it's funny. They said all the people, they work very hard, even destroying their life, their body, healthy, health way I'm talking, to gain more, more, more. And when they retire, they have money, but the body is like old car. You cannot fix it. And they want to enjoy the money, but unfortunately, they're spending the money how to be uh, in healthy way or to live healthy without pain. While if they pay attention more to their body, they will enjoy the life more in young age. And when the time come, they become old, they will be healthier and they don't spend that money that they save to enjoy their life, their last days. So it's really funny. So we have to make balance between how, I, how much I have desire to become something big and between how much I am humble in my heart. So I have to balance. I, I saw people in my life. They told me, Abuna, we are able to make more money, but we decide to spend more time with our family. We had the opportunity to have more income, but we decide not to work on Sunday or when we have Bible study or something, we have to attend it. They said we sacrifice things, but unfortunately that was not sacrifice. It was investment in our family and in our spiritual life, okay? Uh, uh, here I want to just like light on something before I go. I have two things to say in this, you know, Bible study. Uh, I want to just uh, put light on what the word of life telling us. Some lessons, uh, very important, very valuable lessons in our daily life here while we are living and how we can manage these life. Uh, David the king, he say in Psalm 39 from 4 to 6. If anybody want to read it, Psalm 39, 4 to 6. I always encourage you to have your Bible, please, in your hand. Okay. If anybody want to read, just please jump in and read it. I can read a Um, four to six. Right? Four to six. Lord, make me to know my end, and what is the measure of my days, that I may know how frail I am. Indeed, you have made my days as handbreadths, and my age is as nothing before you. Certainly, every man at his best state is but vapor. Surely, every man walks about like a shadow. Surely they busy themselves in vain. He heaps up riches and does not know who will gather them. Amen. So David the king, he realized how much the life is short by writing this thing. He realized that the life of a human is like a shadow. He realized that the life of the human, he said it's like, nothing it's like very short if you measure it it's like this size he was talking about my life it's nothing this is what he exactly said surely they busy themselves in vain so it's nothing our life it's all in vain but at the beginning what he say he say lord make me to know my end and what is the measure of my days that I may know how frail I am. So he was telling him, begging him, tell me how much my life. He didn't want to know, by the way, how, how many years he gonna live. But he was telling God, please let me always remember that as much as I have money, as much as I am 
you know, very important person as a king, as a prophet, uh, making very good things to the people, always make me remember that I'm going to live this life. So according to this, I will always have your fear in my heart. So I will always benefit from my and I will always be ready to meet you. This is what he was exactly telling us. He was not to asking God to know exactly when he is going to live this life. Now I will go to, to, to talk about why the time is important, why the time is significant, why the time is something really should we talk about it. I will talk about five points why the time is very, very important. Number one, the time is always going. Never ever the time will stop. In other words, you can maybe stop everything except your age, your time. Okay? So there is no way to have like bottom to press it, to put pause, on the time. This is only we see it in the movies. Okay? It happened in the Bible twice. Okay? There was a, a, a king or prophet called Joshua in the Old Testament. He prayed and God, he stopped the sun in the sky. What I want to say, and he made two days as one day. So what I want to say, nobody can stop the time. The time is always walking, always running, okay? We always, when we go to the test, let's say, oh, I'm running late. I'm running out of time. Why? Because you cannot stop it. So that's why the time is very, very, very important. And Solomon in the book of uh, Ecclesiastical chapter 1, and maybe, maybe we'll read more from chapter one. He said something very, very, very important. I encourage you all, please put note. If you don't have paper, if you don't have the Bible to put uh, like Mark, please write it on your cell phone and go read it when we finish. Okay, ecclesiastical, especially chapter one and chapter three. And I... If, uh, if somebody has the, this uh, ready, please, Ecclesiastical 1, 4, and 5. Anybody? <coughs> Sorry, can read it. <coughs> One generation passes away, and another generation comes, but the earth abides forever. The sun also rises, and the sun goes down, and hastens to the place where it arose. You see, you cannot stop the time. One generation pass away, another generation comes, but the earth, the earth abides forever. The sun also rise and the sun goes down. Nothing can stop the time. So that's why <coughs> the time is very important. Imagine if for whatsoever reason you went wrong in your life, hanging out with bad friend, having something wrong, learning bad habit, and you were in the college, and you were in your third year, and you are about to graduate, and for whatsoever reason, you couldn't make it, and you fell in your classes, and your friend, they just graduate and they finish. When you look at the... <coughs> They work, they achieving their goal, and you still striving, working just to graduate. You always regret and you say, I wish, but what? Guess what? You can do nothing. You cannot stop the clock. Every single second, it goes from your life and my life. So that's why we cannot stop the time. Another uh, reason the time is important you cannot bring the past. You cannot go to your past, fix something, and then you come. I want to tell you something. 
when I'm talking about the past, I'm talking especially about when we use our time in vain, we waste it. And when we do mistakes in our life, when we make sense in our life, or when we make bad decision in our life. By the way, if I have done the worst thing ever and I come to tell him, Lord, forgive me, he will forgive me. He will tell all my shame. He will wash me whiter than the snow. But sometimes the result of my mistake won't go away. Imagine if I made wrong decision in my life. I was driving very hard, very fast, and I didn't uh, care for what people saying. And then I had an accident. Okay. I did something. I don't know. I hurt somebody. I hurt myself. If I go to God later on, tell him, Lord, if I hurt somebody, please forgive me. I maybe cause that person losing part of from his body or whatsoever. God will forgive me. Maybe that person also will forgive me. But guess what? That person, he will remain without that part. If he lost, let's say, leg or hand or eye or whatsoever. So the result of our mistakes, we cannot change it. The mistake, yes, God will forgive it. But the result of our mistake will remain. So since we cannot go back and fix the time, we cannot go back to fix our problem and to benefit from our time. So the time is very, very important. That's why also Psalm, the, uh, the king, he says, Psalm 144, verse 4, he says, man is like a breath, breath. His days are like a passing shadow. He say, our life is like a breath. How many times you breathe a day? I don't know. Thousands? I don't know. Your life is like the breath. The minute you breathe it out, that's it. It goes. You cannot go back. You cannot fix your past. You cannot correct your mistakes. Why? Because it all happened in the past. I'm not talking about forgiveness. God will always always, always be there for you and me. And his door is always open for you and for me to forgive us. But the result of our mistakes will remain with us, unfortunately. Another reason the time is important, we say too, we cannot stop the clock, we cannot stop the time, we cannot go back to our past and fix it. And also the Bible <coughs> saying, this is another chapter important. I say Ecclesiastical 1 and Ecclesiastical 3. This is Ecclesiastical 3. I encourage you, please, you can put it again on the, in the screen. Please, please, I beg you, read it slowly. Use your highlighter and read it slowly and just pay attention to what the Holy Spirit is telling you. I will read number one, but let's just <coughs> read it a little bit. He said, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under the heaven, everything around you, why you belong to so-and-so family, why you are not the first or the second or the third person in the family, why you are here in the United States or in other place. There is no coincidence. Why you are studying so-and-so or working so-and-so, it's not a coincidence. It's all because God directing you in a way or another. So that's why he said to everything, there is a reason to everything. Now the bishop best passed away. Why Lord? There is a reason. That's why I said the Lord is good. And we know his reason is always good. We as a human, we feel pain. Yet we understand and we believe that what God had done is really, really, really the best thing for this person. It's hard, it broke our heart, yet there is a reason. And not only reason, a time for every purpose under the heaven. Every, everything under heaven has a purpose. For example, a time to be born and a time to die. 
a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill, a time to help, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to whip, a time to love, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time. Can you see? Please read it. Do you really have a time for everything in your <coughs> life? So why the time is important? Because if you have time for everything and you use this time, when you study, you really study. When you work, you really loyal and faithful to your work. You don't cheat, you don't run away. When you eat, you really thank God for what you have. And when you are with your family, you enjoy your family. And when you pray, you really open your heart totally to God, to the wind of the Holy Spirit. There is time for everything under the heaven. Purpose. There is a reason for everything. But do you really, really benefit from this reason or this time and this purpose so you know what God gives you is really valuable? And talking, having, having talking about there is time for everything, this is youth Bible study. Also, Solomon in the same uh, book, but chapter 12, he said, chapter 12, verse one, he said, remember now your creator in the days of your youth, before the difficult days come and the years drown near when you say, I have no pleasure in them. So since there is time for everything, as a youth, don't forget God in your youth. Remember your creator in the days of your youth. Don't forget God. Don't put God on side. We will talk about the priority. Don't put when you are in young age, a God number two or three or four, maybe in another list, put it always the first and the only one. Remember your creator. Remember your Lord, your savior. He's the only one die for you. So he deserved to remember him also in you. So there is a time, there is a purpose. There is to everything, there is a season when you don't forget in this season, your creator. Fourth reason why the time is important because our future is a result for our present. In other words, there is the present time is in your hand. If you don't know how to use it in good way, you will lose your future. St. Paul in Galatians 6, 7, he was talking in very symbolic way about the, the time. And he said, he said, do not be deceived. In other words, don't let anyone deceive you in your present time. He said, God, don't, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. In other words, you cannot cheat God. And he was talking now, see what he said. He said, for whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Whatever you plant, you're going to receive. You're going to harvest. So in other words, in you invest wisely in your present, you're going to have good result in the future. So that's why the time is very important. If you know how to use it, if you know how to benefit, you will have good end. We have very good uh, story Jesus told us in book of Luke 16. We talk about it. We call it the uh, rich man and Lazarus or Lazarus and the rich man. We remember, this is Luke 16, verse 24 to 25, that the person, the rich man, we don't know his name, his name, he was crying out and screaming, say, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. We all know the story that both they die, Lazarus, the angels left him up, took him to, to, to heaven, and uh, uh, he died and they bury him, the rich man. So, the rich man, he went to a place where it was like a fire 
and Lazarus, he was in the bosom of uh, Father Abraham. So the rich man, he was calling Father Abraham. He said, please, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Let's see what was the answer, verse 25. He said, son, remember that in your lifetime, you see the time, how important it is? How, how important it is? Remember that in your lifetime, you received your good. I give you time. The time was very important gift, but unfortunately you didn't use it in your present time and you didn't invest it in good way. And likewise, Lazarus, evil things, but now he is comforted and you are torment. So what God telling us, the time that in your hand, it's like a gold. If you don't know how you use it, you're going to lose it. If you don't know how you're going to benefit from it, you won't actually reap. You won't have good future, good fruit in the future. So that's why the time is very, very important. And the last reason why the time is important, like Sayyidina Silvanus, God bless his soul and bless all of us with his prayer, the life can end up in second. I remember one time I read, I was preparing a sermon for funeral. So I was reading, I really like this and it's stuck in my mind. I always use it in funeral. They say there is a season for everything in this life, to the people, to the animal, to the greens, trees around us. Everything has season. The day has morning, afternoon, noon, night. <coughs> everything, the year, January, February, spring, everything has season except the death has no season. That's why we don't expect when it's going to come. Sometimes people very early, very healthy. Some people very old, not healthy, yet they are alive. We don't understand. So why the time is important? Because we don't know when our life is going to end. That's why we have to be very, very careful. And our life, as we mentioned, it's like short. And St. Luke, he say in chapter 12, 19 and 20, he was always talking about how important to be ready in a parable called uh, the rich fall, the parable of the rich or the man, the rich man fall. He was rich, he was smart how to collect money, yet he was full the parable of the rich fool, okay? Verse 19 and 20. Can anybody read it, please? And especially 20. This person, he was, he was, you know, sowing. He had very good harvest and he made his storage very big and he stored a lot, a lot of thing, okay? And then see what, he was telling God and what God told him in verse 19 and 20. Please, anybody, jump in and read. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, fool, this night your soul will be required of you then whose will those things be which you have provided? Amen. So you see, this person, he was smart. He was, you know how to collect his, his goods, he's rich. But <coughs> in the eyes of the Lord, he was full person. And he told him, tonight, this night, your soul will be required of you. This night, I will come and take your life. This night, your life, your time will be end up. Are you ready? Okay. So now we know why the time is important for five reasons. Because we cannot stop it. We cannot go to our past and correct it. 
there is time for everything. So use every period time of your age wisely and invest in your present so you can have good result in your future. And also our time can end up any second. And I will say a couple of things, how we can set up a couple criteria to benefit from the time. Number one, we have to determine our goal very clear. I have to determine why am I here on this earth? Am I here just to eat, to have good clothes, to work? The five balls of Dyson is, Dyson is giving <coughs> us very good sorry, opportunity to think that I have life, I have family, I have friends, I have health, and also I have to work. So make balance, determine your goal. I'm a Christian, I have goal in my life. I am a member in so-and-so church. Every one of you is a member. What do you provide to your church? What do you provide to your family? What do you provide to your friends? What do you provide to people you work with? What and what and what? There is a lot of things. Do you really benefit? So determine your goal as a Christian, as a believer, determine your goal very clear and work on it. And we have to remember Jesus himself, who is the Lord. One time when he was with a Samaritan woman, the disciple came after he was talking with the, with the Samaritan woman. Then they provide food to him. He refused to eat. And this is in John 4, 34. Then Jesus says something very important. Then Jesus said to them, to the disciple, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Do you really? Because Jesus, he didn't want actually to lose time. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. They told him, let's eat. He said, it's not time to eat. My food is to accomplish the will of the father who sent me is a work came to do it do you really think this way do you really manage your life this way so you have to always set up your goal very clear and work on this goal now time to study how much i should spend time in the school and study how much i should spend time with my family my devotion, praying, going to church, receiving communion, sit up. Very good schedule, benefit from your time. Also, uh, set up your uh, priority. This is very, very important to set up your priority. Now I'm in the school. So my first priority maybe is to study. Now I work. Maybe my first, uh, first priority, maybe to be more loyal and work hard to learn how to do my job. Now, um, maybe engaged, maybe my priority, I have to know more my fiance. Now I'm married, how I can build very Christian family and how. Now I have kids, how I can watch over my kids planning how to bring them or brought them in the Christian values. So always set up your priority, but don't forget, always number one has to be God. Through God, you can see everything and you can set up everything in very good order, okay? Number three, also things to set up or goals to set up in your life. Also, you have to distinguish between something important and something, uh, what can we call it also? I don't know what to call it. I'm just looking for a good word, urgent things. So between important and urgent. Unfortunately, the system of the life that we live in made everything urgent. Drive through, taking food eating while I'm standing, I don't sit with the family, 
wearing clothes and putting makeup for the girls while I'm driving to school or to the work, making call and talking and watching and like everywhere. Be our life become like a machine. So between urgent and being important, what's important, focus on it. What's urgent, be careful. You know, I was watching uh, other day, like a documentary movie. I don't know if I mentioned it or not. So uh, the guy who was <coughs> visiting one of the city in the Middle East, I think it was in Turkey, he said what really brought my attention that all the people sitting in front of their, you know, homes or, you know, business, chatting, the neighbors, laughing. He said, if I want to go one time, choose a place to live, he said, I will choose that city because the people living very happy life. They all working, but they enjoying their, each other and they chat, they socialize. You see, their life is so good. So what I want to, to tell you, always distinguish between, you know, your important things and your urgent things. And if your life become all urgent, you will end up like a machine, work very hard, and at certain point is going to be broken down. Yes, we have to run sometimes, but if you do all the time, you will end up depressed or anxiety, or I don't know what you're gonna end up with. Number four, always ask the Lord and wait for his guidance and sign how to use your time. In other words, ask God, tell him, Lord, now I'm looking for work. Give me this opportunity to benefit. But until I will find work, maybe I will go help in charity things. I will go in the church because I have more time. Ask God how to use your time wisely. Because if you put your time in the hand of the Almighty One, the Almighty One always, He will put you in His schedule and will make you benefit from the time the best result ever you will receive okay and the last thing always as i just say redeeming the time because the days are evil i will end up with a small story about a young guy who was visiting with his mom you know the store and uh, his mom gave him one dollar to spend so the guy he was where the candy where the sweet things and he was looking and his mom, she was just, you know, rushing him, telling him, let's go fast. It's only $1. Just, you know, buy anything. He looked to his mom. He said, mom, I want to buy the best thing because I only have $1. And you and me, we only have one life. Be careful using your time because you don't know when God will call you and call me. If I have 10 lives, believe me, I will use one life just having money. Try to, you know, save money. The second life, maybe get married. The third life, maybe enjoy. The fourth life, maybe having kids. But since I have one life, let me use this life wisely and bless the Lord with the time that I give me because you remember the talent, the, the parable of the five talents? The most important talent that God gave all the human equally is the time. If you don't know how to use it, you only have one time. Please today, before you sleep, stand up in your room, stand up in your room, say, Lord, did I benefit from my life or not? If not, please tell him, to guide you how to benefit from your time spiritually because the days are evil. The days came to Sayyidina Silvanus not good way, according to our understanding. But he was ready. Are you ready? 
before you lose the time, let's all of us wake up and be ready. May God bless you all and be with you. If any question, please, I'm ready to receive and uh, to try to answer. Abuna, no I have a question. Yes, Megan. Um, it doesn't so much have to do with what you explained to us, but I was wondering what the significance of having so many like memorial services are in our church. So like the 40th day and then the year and like the yearly. <coughs> Sorry, I really didn't uh, get it. Can you repeat it, please? Yeah, so I was because wondering... Because of you, what, because of me. I don't know, I didn't get it. Go ahead. It's please. okay. I was wondering what the significance of having so many memorial services are for the people who pass away in our church. So, for example, we have like the 40th day and then a yearly. I will try maybe to answer, you know, you know, shortly. Uh, but uh, <coughs> when we talk <coughs> maybe one <coughs> day... I really apologize about the parable of Riz story of Lazarus and the rich man. Maybe we can talk about it. We can make Bible study just talking about this. Uh, the memorial has too many, uh, uh, let's say, aspect. Number one, we do the memorial for the family. And this is very, very important. Okay. I lost my grandfather whom I was so close to him. So I want to remember to him. And also, uh, so this is comforting the family. The prayer in the church is the best way to, to deliver some condolences and comfort and sympathy to the family whom they someone, okay? And also, uh, our prayers help, doesn't change as 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 far as the Bible and the Holy Fathers of the church telling us, it's not going to change the place of the person who passed away. But if he is in good place, our prayer is gonna be like connection between, we call it earthly church and heavenly church. We're going to have connected. So we pray for them, they pray for us. Okay, <clears throat> if for God bit, they are in bad place, our prayer going to be as a shed over somebody who is in very hot sun, yet doesn't change where is he. Okay, so we can do more talking, <coughs> more, we can spend more time, since we're talking about time, talking about this topic, and we have to say what the fathers of the church. But what I want to tell you that the church was practicing this from day one, okay? So we must have things in the traditions of the church that is not written in the Bible, okay? And St. Paul is talking a lot of time about the significance of tradition. He say, remember or keep what I have told you when I was with you. So there is a lot of things was saying and it's not written. Okay, so the prayer for uh, the uh, for the departed one, it's for the family and for him as well. But if he is in bad place, this is what I want you really to know. Our prayer won't change his place. That's period. Okay. Another thing. Yeah, we're actually getting several questions. The next one is, I used to pray a lot. Now I find it very hard to pray. How can I get myself to pray more? You know, this question one time, one uh, monk, he asked to his spiritual father, he said, how can I fix, you know, this issue? I, I, I don't enjoy the prayer anymore. So what can I do to go back to my you know, like hot prayer, spiritual, you know, uh, life. He told him, pray for that. So how can I fix? 
the problem of not praying by praying. There is no another solution. So the prayer is the answer. So, but I don't feel the, the, the answer will come to me. I don't feel now like pray. We remember, if you still remember, we say the prayer, it's not based and built on how I feel. Our prayer based and built on how I believe. Do you believe in God's presence? If you, <coughs> excuse me, do believe. So when you open your mouth and ask God in your prayer, he is there listening to you. What do you do if you don't feel in his presence? I don't do anything. He's still there. I don't see him. I don't feel him. Yet he is available. He is there. He is listening. He is going to answer. Okay? Imagine somebody, I mean, I had corona. I had no appetite. But all the doctors whom I called, they told me, Abuna, don't stop eating or eating little because that will make your body very weak. Are you and your immune <laughs> system gonna be weak? And then the corona gonna hurt you more. So I was eating and I lost taste and smells, and everything for me became like smash video. I was tasting nothing, yet I was forcing myself to eat because I know if I'm not going to, I'm gonna damage. So the same thing, how can I pray? I actually, I'll, I have to pray. The answer is to pray. Not because I feel, it's because I believe God is there, number one. Number two, and very, very important, let me maybe watch spiritual movies. For me, sometimes when I feel bored and I don't feel like I want to read, even I, I have to, to, to tell you a secret. I always force myself, not because I'm a bona, not because I'm a monk, because I'm Christian, I'm believer. I know the day that I don't read the Bible, I lose it. We were just talking. I cannot go back to the past and correct it. So I have to read, no matter how I feel, no matter how sick I am, no matter how busy I am, there is time. This is what the Bible says, yes? To everything under the sun or under the heaven, there is a time. I have to make time. Okay? Other things, when I feel like not in the mood, Maybe I enjoy watching spiritual movies. So I watch it, one of the sins. So I don't have to read, really. So when I watch the movie, the movie touched my heart. So it's going to be easier for me maybe to open the Bible. One of the father I was reading, he was saying, before you pray, so not to feel bored, not to feel like you don't want to pray, Prepare yourself, like warming up. Warm up yourself with something. Listen to sermon small, not like one hour, like a couple minutes. There is like one minute uh, message or small tube, something. You know, everyone, there is something spiritually can touch his or her heart. Do this thing and the frequency, the more, this is the third thing. The more you do it, the more you become deep, okay, in it. So, but if you do it on and off, of course you will feel bored sometimes. But if you determine, that's it, you will do it no matter what. So how can I fix my spiritual life when I am called spiritually? By reading the Bible. I wish I have another answer, but this is the best answer ever. I'm saying this from my experience, not from what I learned, because reading the Bible is really the answer. Another question, Megan, please. The next question is, <coughs> when we have so much going on in our lives, like work and school, and we try to put everything in our top priorities, how can we manage it without being in so much stress? Even when we know like we have to look up to God, how can we heal from being overwhelmed with time when we can't take away school and work? 
this is very, very, what we call practical question. You know, if you are now in the period, <coughs> stage or period of time in your life, you are a student, I expect you to spend the majority of your time in the school and study. If you are working, I expect you to spend more time in the you know, work. So what I want to say, having God in your life is always there. But now more you study, now more you work, now more maybe you help, I don't know, you're doing something, establishing work or doing whatever. But God is... And I will tell you personal experience. Uh, uh, experience. Uh, I want to to do exercises, walk <laughs> every day one hour. And to be honest with you, here either it's summer hot or winter cold. So outside it's like not good place to walk. We have good days. It doesn't mean that we always don't. But I didn't know when. So I decide to wake up early, like six o'clock, five o'clock, especially in the summertime and springtime and full time. So I can walk outside. So that was my decision. But what gonna happen to my sleep? Slowly, slowly, I get used to it. So I wake up doing my exercise, walking, not really exercise, just walking for one hour, listening to sermon, to spiritual messages, to liturgy, whatever. Then I will go back to do my devotion and go to the, you know, continue my day. Okay. In my day as a Buna here monk in the monastery, we have morning prayer and noon prayer. That, that I consider it as a work. It has nothing to do with my own personal uh, spiritual life. So what I want to say, I find out it was very hard for me to wake up like 5.30 every day. But after a while, I, I saw myself like, no, I can do it and I enjoy it. So to push yourself every day, like a little bit, 10 minutes is not gonna be 10, 15 minutes to spend it with God in the morning or before you sleep. Believe me, it's not gonna destroy your day reading Bible, do your devotion, these 10, 15 minutes is not big time. You can find good place in your schedule to feed it. But the, the, the problem is if God is not number one, unfortunately, I'm not going to find for him. For example, I eat every day. I change my clothes every day. I took shower maybe every day. I breathe every day, but maybe I don't go to the mall every day. If you don't drink coffee, you don't every day. So there is some issues. You can put it number two or three in your priority and you can live without it. But some issues you cannot. <coughs> if you that God is something out of a lot of things and you can live without it, you will find no time for him. But if you believe strongly that you cannot live with him, believe me, you cannot pass your day without spending these 10, 15 minutes with him. So what I want to say, that our life here is very, very, very busy. But as busy as it is, we can find time to God in this busy schedule. I don't know when in your day, but you can find. But if you don't think God is essential, so you're going to leave God left over time to give it to him. And this is bad. So I'm not pushing you to be monk or to be nun, to spend every day four hours, six hours, or whatsoever. But now, as student, maybe you have a lot to do. Find out of this a lot. 10, 15 minutes before you begin in the middle when you take a break after. I don't know when, but do it. Do it five times a week. And Sunday you spend it on, in the church. You go to church. So this is fair enough. If you 
skipped one, two days once in a while for whatsoever reason, don't feel bad. We all have this, you know, bad, you know, management sometimes, but don't make it as a habit. Thank Last you, question, much. if we have a question. Yeah, we have <coughs> actually two more. Um, I don't know, I wonder if you can Sorry, because we can have a QA and a one more time, you know? So that's yeah, fine. I think we can save the, the last one, but this one I think would be helpful for everyone to hear. It says, when people die young, for example, from cancer or disease, did God know beforehand that this would happen? If so, will our prayers change their fate? God knows everything. You can open Psalm 139, you will see God knows everything and we can run away, we cannot run away from him. Okay, does our prayer change? Of course, our prayer change. We know the story of the Nineveh. When the people repent and fast and pray, God changed his mind. He got the, the term to destroy the city. But when the people come back to him, repenting and coming back to him, God accept their repentance and change his mind. So our prayer can move the hand of the Almighty One to do miracle. Why the miracle happened with some people and what doesn't happen with other people? We don't know why, but we trust the goodness of the Lord. So this is what really important have to, we have to know, that if the miracle doesn't happen with me, it doesn't mean that God doesn't love me. I'll give you an example. Do you know how St. Peter died? Anybody knows? Upside down, crucified upside down. Yes. Anybody knows how St. Paul was died? He was beheaded. Exactly. Anybody knows how Jesus died? So what I want tell you Jesus he prayed himself he said Lord please take this cup from me but let your will be done not my will so we pray but we trust his good will we don't trust what we really want because what I want maybe it looks good to me from now here to another year 10 years but for my eternity is it the better thing to have better thing to ever happen to me? I don't know. So our prayer can change. Our prayer can do a lot. Our prayer can move mountains. Our prayer can open the eyes of the blind people, helping. But why it does it happen with this person? Doesn't happen with that? This is we don't know. Let your will be done, not my will, because his will is always good. God knows, absolutely knows, and absolutely is there for us. By the way, the death is not something bad. So if you consider the death something bad, it's absolutely wrong. The death, it's beginning of the eternal life, is the door to the eternal life. What we actually are in our earthly life, it's really death. And what we can, it's really, if we are believer, it's going to be a, a real life. Okay. Thank you very much. So we pray. If anybody want to say prayer, because I want to hear your voice, please. <coughs> please don't let what I say today go just in the air please before you sleep ask god to guide you because this time that you have today you are going to use it and if you're going to use it wisely is going to turn your eternity so please think about the time that god gave you and try to use it in very good and beneficial way if there is nobody want to pray, we will say Lord's Prayer together. Shema Abu Abraham Kadishu Hadalo Shari Amin, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May God bless all the time, all the days of your life. Don't forget, next week we have very, very important and interesting Bible study, which Moshe Ahmed Siriani is going to talk about the Holy Trinity a little bit, then the Holy Spirit in very practical way in our life. Okay? May God bless you all. See you.